G'day viewers, welcome back to the channel. Firstly, I'd just like to say, in the last three months, my subscriber count has doubled. Now, you may have seen a few months back, I'll put a link up here, there's a, I released a video sarcastically saying my viewer count had reached 20. It is now 40 plus, and that was only a few months back, so I have you guys to thank for that. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching my videos. Thank you for supporting me. <sighs> I'd go into the garage at night. Can't see a thing. That's with the light on. Hold on a sec. Mm hmm. Black. I gotta try and find that lead. Plug that into there. Ah. There we go. That's a real chill. Let's do something about that. So if this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. I hope I can teach you something, you like what you see, and consider subscribing. Now first, let me just say, it's cold today. Uh, it's not. It's about 11.30, it hasn't quite hit 11 degrees yet. That's Celsius. So, yeah, it's considerably cold. Now, as you just saw in the previous clip, coming out to the garage is quite a chore at night because... I've got a. I need to plug in a power lead to create power to give me power in this in the, my garage. I have no. There's no built-in power. This is how I get power to the garage. It plugs into a power point inside and runs across the yard. And even this is slightly dangerous. I sh really shouldn't leave it out overnight, or permanently, but I do. And as you saw, it plugs in over here. It's currently not plugged in because we're going to do something with that power board that goes up there. And there's the lights and two leads that plug into it. One lead powers the bench over here, and here's the other one. Now first, let me preface this by saying you should never, ever play with electricity unless you know what you're doing. It's dangerous. It can kill you. It can burn your house down. So only do this if you know what you're doing. Fortunately, I do. I No, I'm not an electrician, but I do know quite a bit about electrics. I have done this before, and before anyone jumps on me and says, you shouldn't do this, I have done it before. That doesn't make it right. It's not a permanent solution. It is a temporary solution because I'm in a temporary environment. Anyway, on with the show. And of course, because I have this disconnected this is the main power source for the entire garage there's no light so we're working off sunlight which well there's a bit of that so here we have just your standard four point power board it does have an overload protection switch but that's the only switch it has so today I'm gonna put a switch in the line that will mean that, well, when I come out to the garage, especially at night, I don't have to fumble around looking for two cords and then try and align them and plug them in. I just flick a switch, bam, we're good. So what we have here is 
obviously. Those scissors aren't great. An inline switch. Most commonly found on appliances like lamps and stuff like that. Uh, but as I said, we're going to be using it on a on a power board. It does come with instructions. And these, this switch is about six dollars fifty. Your local Bunnings. Here's our instructions. Four little screws in the back. Take the cover off, and that is our actual switch. You can see there's six terminals there one, two, three, four, five, six. Pretty much, you got it. You've got three wires in here, you know, connect them all in here. The other thing about this, on the back, you have these two little inserts. Can't get it like that. So, if you're using a flat two cord, you leave them like that. But if you're like this, using a three, cord, a three wire cable, you pop these little inserts out, turn them around, and now when you put the cover back on, it has a round hole and not a half flat hole. Alright, next thing I need is a pair of cutters. Now, we'll, I want the switch close to the plug, but I don't want it right on top of it. So, basically, we want to cut our cable kind of about there. Let's give it a bit more. And then, yeah, we want to strip it to about there, because it has to go to at least there. So, if we give it about that, that should be plenty. When you're cutting the outer sheath, be careful. I'm just using a knife. There is strippers for this. But I'm just using a knife. But you need to be very careful. You see that? That's what I didn't want to happen. Looks like this switch is going even closer. Carefully just cut it. There we go. Now you see where I've cut up here. That's that's what I didn't want to happen. That's how, that's why you need to be very careful when you're stripping the, the the outer sheath back. Okay. So we can strip them all to there. Yes, we will be cutting off the excess. You know what? Give that a twist. And we're going to do that before we take the sheets off. The insulation. About there should do it. And pull that one off. And that one will come off too. There we go. Alright. Now you have three wires. You have a blue, a brown, and a green yellow. Green yellow, that's earth. Brown is active, and blue is negative. And it honestly doesn't matter, as long as the earth is over here, it doesn't matter which way these two go, as long as they're the same on the other side. So let's put that one in. Put 
put it right up to the edge of the insulation. You don't want the insulation, you don't want the wires themselves hanging out. You probably don't want them that long either, so just fold it over. That one's okay because it's just straight through. Screwdriver's too big. Let's just take that back out for a sec because that's going to be easier to fit last. One in there. And that's the wrong way. I want the orientation so that the switch is sitting out while the plug's like that. So I'm going to put the brown in that one. Yes, you will have excess wire because you have different lengths and that's not going to sit properly. There we go. There we go. That's how that's going to sit. That's okay. Now we need to do the same to the other end. Together, we need to test it to make sure it works and everything's okay and I don't like that. That brown wire is exposed there. I'm not a fan of that. Get close and closer to that plug. set up now as I mentioned earlier I only do this if you absolutely are confident you know what you're doing electricity is dangerous as I also mentioned this is only a temporary solution 
not to mention if anything's going to go wrong it'll either blow the fuse on the house or it'll blow that overload switch before it sets fire to anything or explodes or anything like that but I'm just going to put two screws back in here because now we need to test it okay I've just plugged my grinder into the board holding that here's our main line switch is off I'll plug that in come back here nothing yet that's a good sign Switch that on. Grind to work. Switch it off. Grind it doesn't work. That's success. Alright. Everything plugged back in. Let's try it out. Hey, we have light. That is going to make life so much easier. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, and during, electricity is extremely dangerous. It can kill you. It can burn your house down if you do something incorrect. So only attempt this if you really know what you're doing. Technically, for something like this, you really should have a license to do this. But anyway... I could have this certified in a heartbeat, that's not an issue. The more important issue is your personal safety. Don't do this if you don't know what you're doing. Even something as simple as this. But anyway, that is going to make my life a bit easier. Anytime I need to, I can leave that plugged in now, I just switch it on and off when I'm coming in or going. And I don't have to muck around trying to fumble around in the dark for two cords and try and align them and plug them in. Especially if I have my hands full. That's always interesting. So, thanks for watching this short little video. Stick around, there's another video coming up. And just another short one. See you there. A few months back, I made a, well, I updated my camera stand and since then it hasn't really been working out so this time it's camera stand 3.0 stick around so as i mentioned camera stand well the additions to the, the base that i made years ago it's not really working it's it's cumbersome it's multiple pieces which makes it cumbersome and trying to move from here in the shop out into the yard uh, it takes me a long time just because I've got to move many multiple separate pieces not to mention four legs it doesn't sit real well on uneven surfaces so I'm basically I'm going to use three of the legs and the upright from that stand and I'm going to make a tripod first thing I've got to do I've got to get these little tabs off here and then the interesting part comes, I need to cut down the main shaft that the camera is standing on right now. That's going to be fun.
okay, now's where it gets interesting because that's where the camera lives and I need that. Mm-hmm. All right, I got you set up on the bench. All right, that. So, if there's any shaking, well, you know why. bunch of steel I have lying around. Well, this piece here, that holds the end square in there, so that's square to the table. So I know when that hits the ground, it's gonna, well, that's a bit loose, it's going to be square to the ground. And then this holds the angle of elevation, so that if you see, there and in there those joints are pretty tight and then of course this piece here holds the angle of the main shaft so that's all in place and it's nice and nice tight fit very little movement there and this one just equals this one Just to keep it up on the same plane. The only thing I haven't worked out yet is the rotation it needs to go. I'll figure that out once I get the first leg on. Well, it appears my well, camera battery is on its last legs because I just, again, lost a whole bunch of footage because the camera died on me. So let me run you through what I just did. Grabbed out my bevel and my protractor. Set the protractor to 120 degrees. That gives me this angle that it needs to be set at because there's going to be three legs. 360 degrees in a circle, 360 divided by 3 is 120. Then we set the bevel using the protractor at 120 degrees. Lock that down. Then we come over here. I set it on there, set the other one. And then I just happen to have a piece of angle welded that in place so that holds that leg firmly in place that is 120 degrees right there so I welded that leg in but I didn't really think this through because how do I turn to put the third leg on give me a minute I'll get back to you when I figure it out Alright, oh, this battery is really starting to annoy me. I now have it plugged into a battery, a power bank. But next time on Pop or Fix It, we're going to replace the phone battery. Meanwhile, this time, I welded it in place. How I managed to figure out where to put the third leg is I put marks. Get up there. On that one, there and there, at 100 millimeters from from the end, and then around on the on the center line, at 100 millimeters from the end. And then I set it so that that measurement, which as you can see there, is about 180 millimeters, is the same as come on. Why not? Ah, oh, yep. That on there. Seriously? 
So with it locked down so it's not going to go anywhere, take three. From that point there to that point there is yeah, around about 180 millimetres. We go on the other side from that point up to this point it's a little bit over 180 millimetres. It's close enough. Yeah, if you stand back, can you tell they're not exactly the same angle? No. Yeah, I can. Don't matter. But now, I need to find out if these three feet actually sit on the ground. That one looks alright. That one looks alright. Oh, this one. Yeah, it's, it's off a little bit. Never mind, we can fix that. As always, keep it simple, stupid. Big shifter, open it up a couple of mils so it'll cover that. There we go, fixed. And there we go. That's that's it. Yeah, you can barely see it, can you, from this point. But that's how far I had to go back to get it all in the shot. It's got a really wide base. It's I think it's about a one meter circle. I think. I don't know. I can't remember. But now that goes in there. And I can have the camera I'll set out like that, peeking down over my shoulder, and it's not going to go anywhere. And <laughs> one hand, let's go. Whereas a week ago, it'd take me five minutes just to move from there to there and set it up. It's it's set up. There we go. Again. Something else to make my life a lot easier. Because I need a lot of them at the moment. Isn't it? Can live up there. But even even if I'm not using it. Uh, yeah, it's a struggle because it's so big. And if I stick it in there like that, it's... It's pretty low profile, so the chances of tripping on it are minimal. It's not in the way. That's that's really cool. Uh, pack up now. Well, again, as always, thanks for watching. And again, as always, I hope somebody got something out of that. I hope you learned something. If you did learn something and you like what you saw, hit the like button down below. While you're down there, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you know when the next one's coming. And I'll see you on the next one when we replace a battery in this phone camera. See you then.